this next case, we review the deployment of a distal posterior cerebral artery flow diverter in tortuous anatomy. This case describes a 59-year-old male with a one-year history of dizziness and blurry vision. He had a known PCA aneurysm since 2007, which had grown in size significantly. Here is a CTA in 2009 and again in 2018, showing interval growth over nine years of this complex PCA aneurysm. Given the patient's progressive symptoms, as well as growth in size of the aneurysm, we discuss potential treatment options, including flow diversion for this patient. The risks include thrombus formation, stroke, hemorrhage, stent occlusion, rupture of the aneurysm, and access site complications. Alternatives include surgery, as well as observation. Once we've accessed the radial artery and navigated the catheter into the subclavian artery and up the vertebral artery, we now have stable guide position for attempts to flow divert this complex PCA aneurysm. As is shown here, the wire is maneuvered into the distal cervical vertebral artery over which we advance our guide catheter. Our guide catheter is temporarily parked in the mid cervical vertebral artery through which we now bring a microcatheter over a microwire. This is an 027 microcatheter big enough to deploy a flow diverter. Here we see the microwire being advanced into the proximal, mid, and eventually distal basilar artery. We can see the anatomy is somewhat tortuous and the wire prefers to take a superior cerebellar artery. After a few attempts, we navigate the wire into what we believe to be the posterior cerebral artery. However, the wire doesn't quite match the roadmap. Here we can be seen advancing the guide catheter into more distal position for more stability in preparation to deploy a flow diverter. While the wire did not feel right, at this point we obtain new images to confirm we are in the correct place. And as you can see, the wire is not in the posterior cerebral artery, but rather it is in a large perforator. It is critical to develop a feel as well as visual understanding when the wire does not quite match the roadmap. It is very easy to become confused and access a perforator which overlaps on angiograms the posterior cerebral artery. Great care must be taken not to access the perforator or to understand that one is in a perforator to avoid uh, the complication of rupturing these basilar perforating vessels. Once we access the posterior cerebral artery, we navigate the wire across the aneurysm and obtain distal purchase in the vessel. It is critical to get the wire distally in order to navigate a large microcatheter through the aneurysm into a distal landing zone. Once we have significant distal access with the 027 microcatheter, the flow diverter is then brought into the microcatheter and is deployed distal to the aneurysm. We allow a significant distal landing zone in order to prevent the flow diverter from herniating or collapsing back into the aneurysm. Here we can see deployment of the stent, distal, across, and proximal to the aneurysm. We now bump the stent proximally in order to compress the stent a little bit in order to reduce the interstices and create more flow diversion. Here we can see a meniscus or stasis of contrast in the aneurysm. Once we're satisfied with the placement of the stent, we then retrieve the stent delivery wire as well as a microcatheter. Final angiograms show persistent stasis of contrast in the complex aneurysm with excellent flow in the parent vessel.
Lessons learned. Gaining distal access is crucial to achieve appropriate stunt deployment. Do not ever only rely on roadmap guidance for navigating distal vasculature as perforators may overlap with parent vessels. It is crucial to develop a feel as well as take new images if there is any doubt that the wire is not in the parent vessel. Do not try to force a microcatheter over a microwire if there is resistance. You may be in a perforator. Finally, when deploying flow diverters in distal vasculature, guide purchase is crucial. Attempt to get very distal access with the guide catheter for stability.